you find a job you love and you never work a day in your life and I think that's you know really true here here at Alba. Zeus, it probably didn't smell very good. It probably didn't smell very good. But you know about the weather in Germany, huh? especially in winter time. Oh, it's shitty. <laughs> We are going to Golf Resort Pankow. Probably the best part of my game is the putting. I'm doing this on purpose. I'm lining them all up. Line them all up. Bang. First take. Money. First try. Courtside Inside with me, Luke Sigma from Alba Berlin. Yeah, I'd love to sit if I can. Yeah, I'd love, yeah. Honestly, because this is where I spend most of my time, just between practice and just hanging out with, you know, talking with the guys. You know, it's why I came to Berlin here to be a part of this team and in this club. My name is uh, Lucas Clayton Sigma, but most people call me Luke. Uh, I was born in Bellevue, Washington. Played four years at the University of Portland, the Pilots, Go Pilots. And then spent my first six years in Spain. Was looking for kind of a, you know, I think a change of scene a little bit. After that, came here to Alba Berlin and been here for six years. Kind of the rest is history. You know, fell, in, fell in love with the city. Uh, the club was incredible, great group of guys. I re-signed for four years uh, after my second year. My second year we lost in the Euro Cup final, um, which was really tough. I think we made three finals that year and lost all of them, which was Awesome. Uh, <laughs> hey, Zeus, Zeus, it probably didn't smell very good. It probably didn't smell very good. <laughs> you know, since I've gotten here, we've really established a playing style that is really fun to watch. We try and have fun every day. Uh, I think what's unique is there's a lot of professional. Kobe! Walk off. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, we like to have fun every day, as you can see. Like they say, you you find a job you love, and you never work a day in your life. And I think that's you know really true here here at Alba. All right, I'll pull out, and then you can hop in, huh? But you know about the weather in Germany, huh? Especially in winter time. What is shitty? <laughs> <laughs> we are going to golf resort. Pankow. Along with Schützenstrasse, it's where I spend a lot of time. Yeah, I'm a big golfer, always have been. And it's a great course because it's, I mean, a lot of courses can be, you know, pretty, I mean, uppity. You know, I wouldn't say I'm like a competitive golfer. It's a beautiful day for golf. The gates. Now watch this drive. How far? I mean, they're range balls, so they don't go as far. But that's probably like 350 meters. <laughs> <laughs> Now watch this drive. In other words, George Bush is on like the first tee of a golf course and he's talking about, we will not negotiate with terrorists. And then he goes, now watch this drive. And he tees off and hits a golf shot. Like it was an actual thing. Stop these terrorist killers. Thank, Thank you. you. Now watch this drive. Yeah, there it is. Uh-oh, Lukey's getting dialed in. Watch out, it's game over. A one take Sigma? Not, in, not when it comes to golf shots. Hey guys, I'm Luke. And this is 14 Golf. So it was like lockdown. I was back in the States. You know, I was, I had a lot of time on my hands, obviously to start. I've always been a fan of those Rube Goldberg machines that are like the chain reaction things that accomplish a simple task. But it was getting frustrating. I think it took us like three hours to finally get the right shot. The machine worked in theory. More than I'd like to admit, the first shot, like I'd say 50% of them where I just missed the first shot. like hit the wall, hit it too hard, not, so, uh, not hard enough. But uh, yeah, it all worked in the end, so. So how boring was it, quarantine? Yeah, it was, I mean, it was boring, man. But I mean, it's different knowing that everyone was kind of in the same boat, because it's not like, it's not really like FOMO, you know, if you're missing out, because everyone else is doing the same thing. Go. Yeah! Oh yeah, that was the one. Missed. Did you say missed? Tough crowd. I, I really stopped watching the NBA once the Sonics left, to be honest. I was a huge Sonics fan. My dad was coaching with them, so I would, you know, go to all the games. Sad they're no longer there. I will not root for OKC, because they are not the Seattle Sonics. 
I want that written in stone. I'm gonna make this fucking shot. Excuse my French. Money. First try. Everyone at home, that was the first try. I needed the pressure. What was your dad doing for a living yeah. back in the uh, days? <laughs> basketball player, professional, 14 years in the NBA, Hall of Famer. Yeah, he's an old player, so it's hoops are in my blood. We just always had a hoop at the house. You know, me and my brothers would play out in the driveway. I mean, as early as I can remember, we were always out there playing. So yeah, it was, it's been a family thing for sure. The best part is he's always been a dad first, and I think that's the most important. You know, it was always, he always cared about me as his son more than me as a basketball player. And, you know, I think that was huge in my development as a basketball player, because I think, you know, professional athletes as fathers, they feel a big time pressure. And I don't know, I don't want to speak for them, but some put a little more pressure on their kids, but I never had that with my dad. But there was a time where, you know, when you're younger and you hear people, you know, walk in the gym and hear people saying, oh, that sickness kid. And you kind of don't really know necessarily what that means, but you put your pressure on on yourself. And he's always encouraged me to be my own player which again is, you know, I'm very thank thankful for because I know that's, that doesn't always happen in my situation. Oh, shh. I'm doing this on purpose. I'm lining them all up. Line them all up. Bang. First take, as always. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sehr schnell. So, you're German, huh? What about it? It's a work in progress. I know all the bad words, man. I don't know if I wanna put that image out there. <laughs> I'm the old dog on the team. We got a lot of young guys. And if you ask my teammates, they'll say that I get grumpy sometimes, but uh, I think I'm allowed that, you know? A little bit of yelling. I try not to, because I know it, no one likes a yeller. The guys know, have known me long enough that they know they just kind of nod their head like, okay, and then that'll feel better afterwards. <laughs> Game day routine. I give myself like a two hour window for a nap, not assuming I'm gonna sleep two hours. I usually sleep at like an hour at most. I read my book to, to help me go to sleep and I'll like fall asleep with the book, like laying on my face or whatever, you know, like an idiot. I'm reading Stephen King, it's called Billy Summers. It's classic Stephen King and I love how he writes because it's you know very easy to read and definitely page turners. I don't necessarily need the stats, I need the, I, I wanna do what the team needs and that can, uh, change from game to game, but you know if I'm rebounding well, I'm finding the guys that are open, and you know my biggest strength is kind of I think as a playmaker, and you know I've I've heard from many different people, including my my family, <laughs> that I should shoot more. But you know for me, I'm just trying to make the right play, and whether it's how I see the game is, I'm usually looking at the pass before the shot. You know so be it, but that's just kind of how I am as a player. Auf geht's, Junge. So why you want to go to the London Bridge now? I don't know. I, I would like for you to turn off. Oh, the dog. Careful, careful petting the dog. The dog bites. Hombre, Misha! I mean, you walk in and it feels like you're in Spain. Great people that work here. Misha and Mario are now good friends of mine. And now all, all my teammates come here. They love it. I did choose, in that sense, I had an offer from a Spanish team, but like it was kind of the very obvious choice to go to Spain and it was just kind of luck of the draw that I could also speak Spanish. So my first year in, in La Palma, I could understand a lot. I picked it up pretty quick understanding, but the speaking was, you know, I, it wasn't as good. It was always better a couple beers in as it is with most languages. <laughs> Post basketball, you know, I've thought about it. I haven't made a decision yet. I hope to keep playing quite a few more years, but I um, always thought I'd, coaching is something I would naturally get into. You know, my dad was a player that ended up being a coach. There's also a part of me that maybe wants to just not live the basketball schedule lifestyle for a while. You know, part of me also would love to just be like a caddy on the PGA Tour, <laughs> find a good golfer and be a caddy. Basically, the final answer is I don't have an answer. You know, hopefully I find something I love as much as, you know, basketball. Alle Spiele live, nur beim Magenta Sport.